do it, did he? It was tempting. All right. Well, our next guest is a man who cannot lie, but in fact, there's not even one big but in regards to that fact. So we're going to test this honesty of his as we talk today about startups, technology, and the entrepreneurship in entertainment. So please put your hands together for Anthony Ray, AKA Sir Mix Alive. Come on, Al. Thank you so much, man. It's great to have you. It's a pleasure. I've got my own fucking mic. <laughs> right, it looks, it looks good on you. You know how to handle it. Make sure it works. Okay. Okay, so there's more to you than just big butts. <laughs> a little bit. Right. A little bit. I mean, I know the you know the typical rapper persona is to be real smart off camera and then yeah. you know okay, what the and then fuck just, is yeah, and then turn it up. Right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, nerd out with me. I mean, were you one of those kids that played with Legos? Like, talk about your early uh, nerd night. Legos, man. I was like you were taking apart toasters. Yeah. And worse. Oh. Worse. At, at 13, I um, my dad had a thing called a Hurricane 350. What that was was a it was an old C illegal CB amplifier. Okay. Right? And he gave it to me. He said, son, this doesn't work. If you want to play with it. You need some illegal. And I fixed it. Right? right. I, I, learned, I taught myself how to read schematics and all that stuff. And I oh, actually cool. fixed it. Yeah. But I didn't understand how to rectify AC coming out of a transformer. Turn it to oh, DC. Oh, the AC-DC problem. And then yeah. I plugged the shit in the wall. Pow! <laughs> But it did work when it was in the car. Yeah. Well, I love when you were telling me that story. You like literally just cut a wire, and you're like, well, that one goes into the wall, and that one goes into the yeah, thing. Yeah, I had it working they, in the that, car. That goes into the thing. That's the wall. Let's just put them back together and like assume car. it'll I work. Right? I got big-headed. I said, I'm going to take it in the house. <laughs> so I took my grandma. She had a lamp. And I took some masking tape, <laughs> cut it, and wired it up to DC, and blew everything up. All right, but you learned from it, right? Yeah, I you got an ass whooping. That's back when you were <laughs> working. <laughs> Right, you had a, you had a couple of scars you were showing me too, right? Like you yeah, had a couple yeah, injuries. I got, like I got hit with some high voltage. Um, <laughs> back, I was building a big ass amp, like a it had about eight thousand volts on the plate, <laughs> and about three amps. Uh. And luckily, I turned it off, but I have bleeder resistors across the big high voltage capacitors, and yeah. bleeders cracked, and I didn't know that. <laughs> and the high voltage wire fell off. <laughs> yeah. Catch you a little. Yeah, that's a battle scar. Yeah, that's a battle scar. For that sure. shit is crazy. You lose your memory for like ten minutes. Oh, you do? Yeah. Like, you just were like, I, I don't know. I, I, like, I, 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 I don't know what this, yeah, I don't I know who you I are. I six pack and buffed <laughs> up. And I like, you don't forget your memories. You just become the rock. Yeah, like, that's what happens. Yeah, you're just like, I'm the rock now. Yeah. I looked in the mirror. <laughs> Reality. <laughs> OK, well, take me back. Like, one of the things that's really interesting about your career is that you were in it really early on, and you were, uh, like, seeing kind of, like, transition from tape to CD, from CD to DVD, and, like, VJs, like talk to me about this whole journey you've been on. Yeah, I, I um, what made me want to get into music, oddly enough, wasn't music, even though I was a music fanatic. What made me want to get into music is um, when I was a little kid, Kraftwerk um, and Devo yeah. and Gary Newman, all the early new wave stuff and all the German techno stuff. I, what blew my mind is when I first saw Kraftwerk, there were no drums, there were oh, no yeah. guitars, and they had this little box. And I remember the box had three pads on it, and they were doing numbers on it. <laughs> but I'm like, shit, that's what I got to do right there. And ever since then, I've been wanting to do music. And I started out, um, I'm probably one of the first rap artists ever to actually build my own studio, wire my own studio from scratch. Wow. So, uh, so you said, you said shit as a kid? That's my motherfucker right there. <laughs> I, can see, I can see you two being friends. Yeah, I, yeah I, I see similarities in how that all played yeah. out. OK, so, so moving forward a little bit, now you have uh, kind of hit, you've had some success where now you have the option to either like invest in startups or you can kind of work on a new project for yourself. And you were kind of telling me about the way you see Silicon Valley startups and some of the things that you like and don't like about it. So could you? Oh, it's not just Silicon Valley. Kind of no, it's everywhere. What, okay, what okay. blew the my mind thing, is, yeah. you know, I grew up in an era, it was, it was more brick and mortar. I mean, if you had an investor, your primarily, primary goal was to give them his Pay money back, back right. and become profitable and bootstrap the rest of the way, right? Right. Now what I notice about startups, and I hope nobody gets offended. They will be, but, but that's good. Go for it. I, I, in Seattle, I they see They should it be the probably, time, right? yeah. They, I don't know. I so think I'm not going to say the company name of Drona, but okay. <laughs> they come up to Seattle, and they just threw money on the wall. And you see these bunch of companies in cubicles trying to come up with something to get some of that money. So a couple of them come up with something. They get two, three million bucks. And it wasn't about 
getting the two, three million bucks back and becoming profitable. Right. It was about how do we get to the next round of funding? And then they do a party, they throw a party every time they get some <laughs> so money. So it's like a loss of focus. Yeah, right. Oh, so yeah. It's like, wait a minute, I loan you a million dollars and you're throwing a $300,000 fucking party? I mean, I, I, I just. <laughs> I, I don't know. The, the investors are in the house, obviously. Yeah, yeah I mean, yeah, exactly. Yeah. What's up with my VCs? Yeah. No, I, I, it really is, it seemed odd to me because in the era in which I came up, you know, if a guy loans you a million dollars, yeah. you're blowing 150 within a month, you probably end up dead. Yeah. Oh. yeah. yeah. Don't scare me. That's yeah. right. Yeah. OK, well, well, who are some of the unsung heroes in your story? I'm curious. Like, well, who, who are some of those pivotal people that helped you get your career going that maybe usually don't get credit? Like, who is behind the um, scenes? There's one guy in particular that never gets credit. Because you know I started out on an independent label. Right. And you're right, I came up when analog and digital were starting to kind of cross. Mm -hmm. So that argument gets old. They still have the <laughs> argument analog versus digital. But um, there was a guy named Greg Jones. Okay. Who, um, he ran a bunch of arcades in Seattle, and he put the initial money into the independent label that I was on, and never asked for a dime back. To this day, man, you won't oh, ask for it, you really? take it. I offer him money, he's like, no, 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 man, you do your thing. You, you sent him a man. birthday card and stuff? Uh, I, tried to send him, I tried to send him a car, he wouldn't take that in. <laughs> and so, it's like it's still sitting out front. He's a guy that never gets credit um, early on, and obviously um, Nasty Ness was a DJ on oh, K-Fox, yeah. yeah, back in the day, and he, he brought me on the radio, and what happened when he pulled me on there, I was just a cat off the streets. I was a street DJ, he was a radio DJ. Usually yeah. we would hate each other. Um, but what happened is I started to understand demographics and what, right. what, what the consumer likes, what they don't like, how to build a hook, when the hook has gone too far, how to, how to cut back on solos, bring your verses down. The, and I started to understand song structure based on having access so, to radio. So you realized there was a need for big butts, and you, <laughs> like, you were like, you were like, look, there's a demographic for this, I need to make it. How structured was that song? That song, honestly, was a kind of a, something that African Americans already knew. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Like, See, a, like a given fact that white we, people hadn't caught on to yet. It was yet. kind of a serious song, but I decided to make it playful. Um, basically, prior to Baby Got Back. That was a good answer, though. Other than I the know, Cosbys, yeah. other than the Cosbys, prior to Baby Got Back, the majority of African women you saw on TV were maids, housewives, you know, yeah. you had good times, you had give me a break, you had that's my mama, and that was all you saw. So to everybody outside of the African, African American community, they went, that's what black women look like, that's it. And I said, you know what, I wanna do a tongue in cheek kind of response to that. <laughs> And without pissing people off, I mean, I, I had women got mad. I could have done Baby Got Brains, but who would have bought that shit? Yeah. <laughs> ooh, ooh. Yeah. That's all right, that's all right. Yeah, so okay. I mean, that's okay. what it is. And it, and it came out, and by the time they realized what I was talking about, it was too late. Yes, it's already big, already yeah. blowing up. Two paces okay, well, two. let's talk about the future. What do you think the future of, especially live entertainment, looks like? Having Life is Beautiful on here, like, what do you think that's gonna yeah, like, when I look, look at, like in the next few like, years? It, tell you the truth, I, I, have, I started the company called True Human Interface about um, 2010. Okay. And um, we're finally getting ready to release some product, and that's what it's all about. It's all about the live performance, because I think, um, and I'm, I don't want to get serious here, but I think artists, <laughs> there's a generation of artists that have grown up giving away music. Right. Because there's a generation of consumers that have grown up getting music for free, and they expect it for free. Right. So what happens is, subconsciously, you teach these artists not to value their art. So they have a tendency to give it away and not think about it. Um, so primarily, their, their primary way of making money is live. Yeah. But there's nothing new live. You, you, you're still a guy playing a guitar, a guy playing drums, and it, there's no interaction. So you feel and like I that's the gap. I'm kind of yeah. flirting with it. That's interesting. But I have something that I'm about to release that. Oh, the they, interaction it's is in gonna stealth be, right now, huh? Yeah. OK. Yeah. That's good. Yeah, because you know, I was surprised we were having this conversation earlier about uh, you said a lot of the artists used to just make money selling music, and now yeah. it really is just going right on. Yeah, tour. the models changed. Yeah, I mean, you were right. estimating. It, tell me if I quote it right, but like seventy percent of like a, an average artist's income might come from just the tour. So it's a real, yeah. it's a serious yeah, full time I think the majority job. Majority of artists now. make about probably about. I'm just guessing about 70, yeah. 70, 70 75 percent. Okay. But in, but at my peak, it was reversed. Right, you were making money on the. We went on tour to yeah. sell records, so we would do what were they called? You know. Tour con touring concerts, they were promotional concerts, right. where literally you didn't get shit, you just showed up, and you played, and all of a sudden this tidal wave built. Of music, of money was coming example, in. Example, yeah. when, when Baby Got Back was released, we did a tour in which we were only getting 2,000 bucks a night, and I had eight people in my group, 
and a bus that was costing me a thousand dollars a day, plus hotels and per diem, right? What kind of bus was that? Yeah, was, like, oh, Prevost, baby. You gotta travel, you know. You know, you don't want too many. It's a lot you don't of want rent. A sausage you... fest on one bus, you know what I mean? Oh, it came with girls. Yeah. yeah okay. Stretch that out, you know. So. Right. I didn't think about that factor when I buy a car. We, we did if that it comes tour, with girls or not? Yeah. And we lost crazy money. Yeah. And by the time we hit the last date on the tour, which is Panama City, Florida, we were number yeah. one in the nation. Wow. So that's Impressive. How don't work, don't work like that no more. <laughs> all right. Well, thank you for coming to talk to us. I think that's about all the time we have. But I really appreciate you coming downtown Vegas, checking out what we have here. Did you and, see those three millionaires um, that were just up here, man? Yeah. Well, the whole audience was cheering about your VC rich comment. Rich motherfuckers, man. <laughs> I swear, yeah, rich. It's a weird, talk it's rich. a weird mix in Vegas. Yeah. Right. <laughs> I know. You can hear it. The low voice. And, and, yeah. They talk like this. <laughs> yeah, like 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 the mic's working, but they think it's broken. Or like, or like. They have all the little acronyms. Yeah, the CDAGT and the CGS. Right, the inside the jokes. CGS yeah. Inside mods. Yeah, I know it's rough. <laughs> all right, let's give it up. Thank you very much, Anthony Ray, for coming out talking to us. Thank you. Really appreciate that. That's good. Because she looks like a total right. prostitute. Okay. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> you think of the song yet, or you still love it? Still feels good, right? I can't believe it. Yeah, so. I